Thanksgiving to you, in case I miss you before Thursday. Hope y'all have a blessed and wonderful Thanksgiving. A good time of year to visit family and catch up on old times and eat a bunch of food and take a nap. <clears throat> it's a good time. Watch ball games. Watch ball games. Uh, on announcements, bed delivery be this afternoon. Actually, it won't. Actually, it won't. <laughs> the, the family that we were going to deliver to uh, canceled, so we are uh, going to do it next week. Okay. Well, also, if you missed the showing of the Nativity story Wednesday, you can see it at Center Springs on Sunday, December 1, uh, 5 p.m. A community Christmas party will be held on December 8th at 5 p.m. at Center Springs. Bring your favorite Christmas dish or food item and come join the fun. Also, Center Springs will hold a come and go style communion service on Christmas Eve, sanctuary from 5 to 6 p.m. Let's also remember the donation for the stuffed animals school supplies and spare change. Of the other announcements or concerns that we need to discuss at this time, if not, let's turn to page 133, 133, and let's do the first, the second, and fourth verses of glory to his name. And if you'd stand and remain standing for the affirmation of faith, page 133. <clears throat> Yeah. 
this mountain so rich and sweet. Cast out the soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to His name. Now let us confess the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. But then shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father. So my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember, and I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go along with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God. With a voice of joy and thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you in despair, O my soul, and why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him for the health of his presence. As we light the candle of hope, let us take into consideration the reason the concept of hope exists. Hope typically exists for those experiencing despair. The Christmas season, this Christmas season, I pray that we actively seek to bring hope to those around us who are struggling with a time of despair. Amen. Do we have any prayer requests? Not listen to the board. Jim Dillard. Jim. Jim Dillard. Dillard. He's been in the hospital since Wednesday night. I don't know what's wrong with him yet. Any others? Christy Clark. Any others? Which, uh, which, uh, what's his last name, Pat? Can I say it? Oh, Mitchell, Mitchell, yeah, Hoffman, Mitchell Hoffman, Hoffman, um, <coughs> Mitchell Hoffman. And also Frank Genesee. You don't know, it's just a local. Any others? Remember the Cook family, uh, Billy Cook, who was a long time member of uh, Sinner Springs, passed away this past week. Any 
Frazier Boys. I'm able to be back here this Sunday. Just glad to be here. Kenzie has gone a week or a little over a week now without a convulsive seizure. This is the first time that she's gone an entire week without a convulsive seizure since all this started. Um, she's still having what we call absentee seizures, um, where she basically spaces out and is, um, so that she still has that. But being able to go a week without a convulsive seizure is a sign that she's working her way through this. So. Any others? Let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your many blessings. God, we thank you for the chance and the opportunity we get to be in your house and to worship, to fellowship, to sing the songs, to hear your word. God, I'm most thankful for the opportunity we get to be around a group of loving Christians who are eager to support each other, pray for each other, and bear each other's burdens. God, we lift those burdens up to you. So many on the prayer list, so many that were mentioned. God, there are people that are dealing with recovering from surgeries and um, illnesses and loss of loved ones. God, we just pray that you take those burdens. That you deal with each need and each situation as only you know how. God, that you would give us the peace of mind knowing that it's in your hands and that you've taken care of it. God, we thank you for the praise reports. Thank you for allowing us to see what you do in the lives of those we love. God, I pray now your blessings on our tithes and offerings. Pray that you bless the givers. Pray that you would bless this church. Give us wisdom, but also courage to be bold with your resources reach our community and the world around us. Mm -hmm. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Yeah. 
Sitting here thinking, I can't recall the last time I read out of this book. <laughs> Micah chapter 5. We'll be looking at the first four verses of Micah chapter 5. our sermon series on and he shall be called today we're going to look at Israel's ruler Micah chapter 5 verses 1 through 4 says this now must yourselves in troops daughter of troops they have laid siege against us with a rod they will smite the judge of Israel on the cheek but as for you Bethlehem Ephrathah too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you, one will go forth for me to be ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. Therefore, he will give them up until the time when she who is in labor has born a child. Then the remainder of his brethren will return to the sons of Israel, and he will arise and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord. In the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will remain, because at that time he will be great to the ends of the earth. Let us pray. Father God, again, I thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. God, I thank you for this scripture. I thank you for the promise that is included in this scripture, that is intertwined within these words. God, I pray that you would speak through me this morning. Let it. Let my words be your words only. And God, I pray that you would give us all open ears, minds, and hearts to receive your word and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> that word judge, 
With a rod, they will smite the judge of Israel. The word judge from the Hebrew word shaphat, which means government. He is referring to the siege that will occur, the overtaking that will occur of the children of Israel, of the nation of Israel. And in fact, um, most likely referring to the rule by the Roman Empire. The country of Israel during the time of the Roman Empire changed quite drastically the culture of the Israel people, of the Israeli people. It changed the way government occurred with the Israeli people. But the promise here is that out of Bethlehem, and it says Bethlehem Ephrathah, Bethlehem literally means house of bread. It was known as a farming area. Ephrathah means fruitfulness. So Bethlehem Ephrathah would literally translate to mean fruitful house of bread. As I said, Bethlehem was known as an agricultural place. It was a farming town. Bethlehem's size at the time of Jesus was about 60 acres large. I know people who own land bigger than 60 acres. <clears throat> The population was about 300 to 1,000. Compared to Jerusalem, Jerusalem was about 220 acres in land size during Jesus' time and carried a population of 25 to 30,000 people. So when he says Bethlehem was too little to be considered, among the clans, it was too little to be considered among the clans. Bethlehem was an afterthought in that region of the country. Compared to other cities in, in, in the Judean region, Bethlehem was small and very relatively and quite insignificant. However, this tiny little town holds a lot of historical prominence. The story of Ruth and Boaz happens in Bethlehem. <clears throat> it was the hometown of David. And of course, it was the birthplace of Christ. Isn't that just like God? He'll take the most insignificant and unimportant people, at least in the minds of the average everyday person, and place them right in the spotlight. <laughs> you can think of stories like Gideon, David, Daniel. They were nobodies. And God put them right in the spotlight. Notice this statement in verse 2. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. Jesus is eternal. He has no beginning and he has no end. Now we have a starting and a stopping point for his time of physically being on earth. But in the grand scheme of it all, Jesus is completely eternal. And as we transition from verses 2 to 3, we see the word therefore right after the word eternity. Therefore, he will designate the time and place of the arrival of the Savior of the world. Since Jesus is eternal, he's not controlled by time. Since Jesus is eternal, he determines at what time in history his time on earth would take place. 
<laughs> and he chose the exact time that it needed to happen. It was meticulous. It was calculated. He chose the one time in history that it would make their greatest impact. The word arise comes from the Hebrew word amai, which means to endure or to take a stand. Israel's ruler will endure everything that he could possibly endure and will take a stand against Israel's enemies, not in a way that they expected, but in a way that was needed. He will care for and protect his flock. It's important as we enter and, and get into the Christmas and the holiday season, our ruler didn't come as a tyrannical dictator. He came as a caring shepherd, intent on protecting his flock from every threat at all cost. The king of kings came to this earth unlike any other king. He came to serve, not to command. He came to provide, not to tax. He came to feed, not to feast. And he came to protect, not to punish. When we think of rulers, we often think of the worst possible scenarios. That firm-handed commander, ruler, dictator, that selfish person who only wants to make themselves more prominent, more wealthy, more powerful. Jesus wasn't that type of ruler. In fact, he frequently, during the Gospels, reminded his disciples, I came as a servant. And he would use that notion, that fact, that concept to reiterate to his disciples that if you want to be like me, you have to be a servant yourself. During the Christmas season, there are so many things and even people that will want to rule your life. Not that they're intentionally trying to, but they will want to rule your life. I remember one year, I had 20 places between Thanksgiving and Christmas that I was expected to be at, 20 events. I made 18 of them and got chewed out because I was late for one. They meant well, but they, I had 20 situations where people were ruling my life, were trying to rule my life. They had designated on my calendar places that I was expected to be at. It was overwhelming. When I hit January 1st, I had zero interest in celebrating anything. I was exhausted. And that's one of the things that when we reach this holiday season, Thanksgiving coming up Thursday, Christmas events following, that all of these are situations where someone else is offering to run your life for you. So with all of these things, all these different things and people wanting to rule your life, I pray that we choose the ruler who loves us so much that he'd rather die than live without us. Because that is the ruler that Jesus is. That is the ruler of Israel that God called for Jesus to be. Let's pray. Father God, again, I thank you for your word. Thank you for your message.
I thank you that you placed a ruler over Israel and over the rest of the world who is a servant ruler who loves us beyond measure God of all the things that we can choose to take over and run our lives I pray that we choose Christ I pray that we choose the ruler who rules out of love <clears throat> and not out of power I pray that we take his example and serve others this season with the love and compassion that you exemplified for us. Help us to choose that kind of ruler, that kind of leadership. And then our Christmas season will be that much better. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Turn to page 251. 251. And there's four verses. And let's do all four verses of Amazing Grace. And if you'd stand and remain standing for the benediction. 251. <laughs>